Hello and welcome back. My name is Ted Kolokiewicz and this is Ted K Studio. In today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create these illustrations in Figma. So let's jump right into it. Many people think that Figma is only used for UI, UX and web application design and product design, but you can do basically about anything visually in Figma. And I use it for a lot of things. I use it for branding, I use it for illustration projects, iconography, etc, etc. And today I just want to show you how to create this kind of artwork and these kind of icon illustrations in Figma. Since these are on the isometric layout or isometric plane, we're going to use a isometric plugin, which you can find by right clicking, going to plugins. And I have installed, so I'm just going to open it, but you click find more plugins and search isometric and you should be able to find it. And I use this a lot for these kind of illustrations. It just speeds up the process and makes things very easy with this floating window. By clicking one of these perspective planes, we put on a 45 degree angle, whatever object we select, and it just speeds up the process. So let's just start by creating this coin stack first. And what I'm gonna do first is, just move this artboard. What I'm gonna do first is draw a circle, and we're gonna put it on a 45 degree angle, and then we're gonna rotate it. So it's facing the wrong direction. I want it to face to the right, so I'm just gonna flip it horizontally by clicking Shift H. And then I'm gonna make a copy of this and I make a 50% opacity and put it in the background. The most important thing with isometric illustration is just to have everything on the same plane so that it looks like all the angles and everything is accurate. So what we're gonna wanna do is make both of these around 70% opacity, align them on that angle, and the way to see that isometric angle is just draw a square, put it on the angle, and then align these objects based on that. Now what we could do is connect these two by drawing another object. And then I'm just gonna copy it because we have to connect the ones on the bottom as well to get this coin shape. And let's just align those closely together. Alrighty, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine all of these objects in the back and then move this object to the front. Let's make that lighter so that you can see the difference. And now we have this isometric coin shape that we just created. Now that we have that coin shape, let's copy and paste it and let's put it on that 45 degree angle by rotating it. And we're gonna place it beneath this top one here. And I'm gonna make this top coin a little darker just so that we can see that stacking effect. And then let's duplicate it again and put it in the background showing that there's more than one. So there we have three levels. I think I'm just gonna stop at two. And now what I'm gonna do is duplicate this. And the angle is looking a little bit off. I like th this angle here, it looks a little bit more natural. So what I'm gonna do is just rotate this slightly. And I think that looks better, in my opinion. Now, the next step is just to apply the color and get those gradients in there. So what we're gonna do is do a yellow linear gradient from yellow to red. Start with a nice orangey yellow color and then select a red color as well. Make it 100% opacity. And let's try to make it a little bit smoother transition so it's not so rough. Alrighty, now I'm just gonna copy this and paste it to the back piece, but I'm gonna change the direction of the gradient so that we see that background a little bit. So I'm gonna pull the yellow outward, that way we can see more of that orange in the back and we can even make it get a little bit darker back there. Now let's just copy this and paste this to the coins below. Just copying and pasting this, gonna flatten some of these. And really quickly, we have this nice lockup. However, we want it to be a little bit more shiny, like this one down here. So what I'm gonna do is actually add, play with this gradient a little more so we get, it gets dark and then at the bottom it gets light again, just to have that shine. And let's add this gradient here. Now we wanna make it seem like this is sitting on top, so we have to add a drop shadow. The way I'm gonna do that is just duplicate this Scale it down, we're gonna make it dark. Let's just make it a dark red or a brownish color. And then effects, go to layer blur and apply a layer blur and then make it like 60% opacity just so there's some uh, shadow being cast. And let's copy this actually and place it on top of this just so there's a shadow effect happening here as well. Just gonna lower the blur. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this, create another, or just make this dark. We're also gonna apply a gradient here. Slight one. Alrighty, that's looking good. However, this is looking a little muddy, so I wanna make it more red. Okay, 
Now I want to draw this card. I really like how this sits on the card and casts a shadow in the background. It looks really good. So let's just copy this. Let's make a square place in the back. I'm gonna add some rounding to it. Let's add 20 pixel rounding or let's do 16 pixels. And for the card in the background, we're just gonna make it a little bit lighter than the one that you see there. And what I'm gonna do now is draw a circle, put it on the angle, scale it up, and we're gonna create a mask element and we're gonna mask this. We're gonna click to effects panel, layer blur, increase that blur, and we're gonna select a orangey color. And let's put this behind our coin stack. And then you can make it as vibrant or as dark as you would like here. And we can create this circle effect by just taking another circle, putting on the angle, inverting it, and making it 20 or 10 percent opacity and just place this coin stack on top just make sure that it's centered and I'm gonna place it within that mask just so that it hides back there and maybe we can even add a linear gradient to this so that it fades away in the back and comes up towards the front and there you go I've created this first block over here these colors are slightly more peach slightly more pinkish which I can just copy and paste those. However, I just wanted to create it from scratch. So now that we've created this one, let's work on this one right here. And here we're using these squares. So the first step of the process is similar to creating the coin stack. We're gonna draw a square. We're gonna put it on a 45 degree angle. We're gonna copy paste it, rotate it. We're gonna copy paste it again and rotate it again horizontally. And now we have our square. Just gonna make sure that this is aligned perfectly. And there you go. Now we wanna just apply different colors to these. So for this case, I'm just going to try to replicate this closer. Um, so at the top, we have this teal color, this kind of greenish teal color, and then there's a slight gradient towards a more bluish tone right there. So let's apply that. And on the side, we're gonna start with this greenish teal color. However, it's gonna be purple towards the bottom. So let's just make that purple. Make sure that these are all 100% opacity when you're doing this. Then you wanna make a brighter purple just to match what's happening down there. The main thing with these is just getting the gradients and where the light is coming from correctly. In this case, the light is hitting from this angle right here. And lastly, we're gonna add the same linear gradient on the left side. For this, at the top, I wanna to go a little bit lighter and then not as dark as the, what's happening on the right. That looks pretty good, I like that color combination. Now I'm gonna group this, and we're just gonna create a few more of them. And just scale these down, and now we're gonna spread them around a little bit. To spread these out properly, what I'm gonna do is just gonna copy and paste another square, and I want these to be on that grid, so I'm gonna draw this large object, make it red, and we're going to place these blocks on this just to make sure that they're all, all aligned properly. I like that, I think it's nice and organized. And now we just wanna put an arrow on this back piece. So like all things, we're gonna start by just drawing the arrow flat. And to get it accurately, what I'm gonna do is actually just draw half of the arrow. And then I'm gonna copy paste and rotate and then we'll combine the shape now that we have our arrow let's scale it up a little bit and let's do this isometric treatment for the arrow rotate it to face upward and we'll have it aligned on this line right here now we're going to copy it and we're going to use the same angle for the arrow it's a little easier because it's already aligned like that and now we just have to draw these connections again so i'm just going to open the edit options for the arrow and then combine these just to make it look like a 3d object and i'm just going to copy this gradient from the back piece and then let's copy this one for the front piece there and actually i think i'm going to visually align it and there you go we got the second one built out so let's just copy this let's delete this stack here but before we delete it, I'm just gonna make sure the size is accurate. Similar sizes there, so now we can delete it. This background piece, we can change it to the teal blue color. And then instead of having circles in the background here, we can have 
our squares, square grids here. Alrighty, two down, one to go. So now we're gonna do this last one here. And it's very similar to the cube one, so I'm just gonna kind of speed it up and do a time lapse for you. Just like that, we very quickly rebuilt these isometric icons. I hope you enjoyed that and followed along and try to create your own icons. And I appreciate you tuning in for this Figma tutorial. Also, I've created a Discord called TechK Studio. The link is down below. Join it. It's an awesome community for designers who are looking for support, for looking for interaction, and an awesome community to be a part of. We'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed that video and you feel like you learned something, please drop a like, subscribe. Let me know down below in the comments what you want me to create a video about next, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.